stop listening to him. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't have the mic up. I said, I do a lot of things. You'll understand why when you hear my presentation. The deck six untied. <laughs> if you didn't get that, perhaps you don't have dyslexia like I do. The condition 19th century German neurologist Adolf Kussmaul dubbed word blindness. Those of you who know me may be surprised by that, me being a writer and all. Those of you who know me probably won't be shocked to hear I also have ADD. According to, the, according to the National Institutes of Mental Health, up to 8% of American adults have attention deficit hyperactivity, which I call ADD. The International Dyslexia Association estimates up to 20% of people have dyslexia. Lucky me. I have both. I mean it. I feel fortunate. <laughs> Having dyslexia provides daily entertainment, like the time I saw a sign in the theater lobby that read applause and wondered why it said applesauce. <laughs> and our family joke? My brother transposes digits while giving our dad a phone number. Our father switches the numbers back while writing them down so they cancel each other out. <laughs> and this is what happens when I set the microwave for 52 minutes instead of 25. <laughs> sure, dyslexics see the world differently, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just different. Sir Richard Branson says he, his dyslexia helps him innovate and problem solve. He also has ADD, by the way. <laughs> the ADD diagnosis didn't exist when I was growing up, so I found ways to cope. But when perimenopause hit, those hormonal changes exacerbated ADD's effects. I experienced sleep disturbances, depression, anxiety, hot flashes, and brain fog, including the inability to remember common words. Not exactly an asset for a reporter. When I was diagnosed with ADD, I finally understood why I had experienced so much failure in school, jobs, and relationships, and why I made so many less than ideal decisions. Often misunderstood, ADD was not fabricated by big pharma to sell more drugs or by teachers to dismiss bad behavior. It is a real neurological process affecting decision making and executive functioning. This unfinished path, I started that in the spring. Many with ADD struggle to stay on task and we are labeled poor time managers. We may be impulsive and deal with a variety of issues including dyslexia, depression, anxiety, perfectionism, hypersensitivity, low self-esteem, and auditory processing problems. But these traits don't mean I'm stupid, lazy, or incapable, which is what many of us grow up believing. It's no wonder we get depressed. Yes, I have sometimes trouble, sometimes have trouble completing projects, have myriad interests that distract me, have said and done things that have embarrassed me, and definitely have a hateful relationship with clocks and calendars. <laughs> In performance reviews for various jobs, managers often, okay, almost always, criticize me for being a poor time manager. It was true, but I didn't understand why or how to fix it. But let's dispel another myth, shall we? ADD is not, I repeat, not an attention deficit. It's an attention difference. I get a lot done despite my ADD. I have a superpower. It's called hyperfocus. <laughs> Sitting at my desk for hours absorbed in an engaging project, I forgo food, hydration, sleep, even bathroom breaks. American entrepreneur Peter Shankman, who has, never mind, <laughs> of course, there's a downside to hyperfocus when the world disappears and I lose track of time. Can you say late to meetings, missed deadlines, frustrated partners? Welcome to my world. I can see why people get exasperated with me. I'd like to dismiss the problem saying time is just a human construct, but that rarely placates bosses, family, and friends. <laughs> so, like a visually impaired person using Braille to read, I've learned to use a variety of tools, calendar, timer apps, and a handwritten journal to manage my time, organize my life, and track my successes. Some people are even impressed with my organizational skills now, which is nothing short of a miracle to me. Another misconception, dyslexics can't read. Actually, I started reading earlier than most, and though dyslexia slowed me down, my ADD's inner perfectionist wouldn't allow me to miss a single word. It became my worst obstacle, hampering my ability to scan. I struggled in college, rarely completing the mountains of assigned reading. But there's an upside to this perfectionist. My writing is typically clean and concise. I'm just now learning how to let go and trust that my work is good and when to tell Ms. Perfectionist to take a hike so that prissy voice isn't such a time suck. I've even learned how to scan. About that impulsiveness. A relative used to say I have diarrhea of the mouth and constipation of the brain. 
I'm afraid he had a point. At a job interview around a large conference table with staff members, I was distracted by a fellow stifling a yawn. I asked if I was keeping him up. Yeah, I really said that out loud. <laughs> Recalling it afterwards, I was so ashamed. That's what happens when your brain neurons don't fire properly to alert you to keep that stupid thought to yourself. Needless to say, I didn't get the job and I've yet to determine a positive aspect of impulsiveness. But I have learned to slow down and think before I speak. Some say people with ADD have above average intelligence and creativity, and I'll take it. But I'm not convinced it's so much about intelligence as it is curiosity. Our Ferrari brains are eager for learning and new experiences. This makes us worldly and interesting, albeit an exhausting energy to be around at times. Yeah. <laughs> so far, though, curiosity hasn't killed this cat, and it's made her a darn good reporter. So if you, if someone you know has ADD, I encourage you to seek out some of the excellent books, magazines, and websites out there. There are apps to help with time management and counselors who specialize in ADD coaching. And of course, there's medication. And if you, oops, I use a combination of tools in addition to exercise, yoga, and mindfulness practices. For the first time in my life, I feel like I know who I am and why I'm here. For those of you with so-called normal brains, know that though our brains don't fit your behaviors, your, our behaviors don't fit the confines of your work or learning environments, know that we are a force that you might consider harnessing our strengths rather than focusing on our differences. I wish I'd been diagnosed sooner, but now that I know what it is, ADD feels like a blessing, not a per curse. I just needed to find ways to channel my superpowers for good rather than evil. I'll take that applesauce now.